those are our dad behind me, so this could be Morocco or it could be Chad, but we're in West Texas. In the southwestern United States, introduced our dad have done really great. Hi, I'm Craig Boddington. On this episode of Boddington Experience, we're gonna hunt one of my favorite mountain animals. They're a tough animal, kind of a bridge between the sheep family and the goat family, and always an exciting mountain hunt. It's the month of March. We're gonna hunt with Hunter Ross of Desert Safaris, an off-season month for some things, but this is prime time for our dad. Stay with us for a great Boddington experience. This episode is brought to you by Global Sportsman's Network. Craig Boddington, decorated Marine, award-winning writer, hunter, adventurer. He's explored six continents to hunt over 300 species of big game, and he's not done yet. This is the Boddington Experience. Tascatel Mesa. Now this is a kind of country that's between the Davis Mountains and the Chinati Mountains to the south and it's really good Aldad country with Hunter Ross of Desert Safaris. Hunter, it's been a while since we've hunted together. Welcome, sir. Glad to have you back as always. Good to be here. But, I'm uh, ready. First, first uh, order of business is we better check these rifles. I've, I've broken every rule there is and I've got a <laughs> brand new scope on this rifle. Oh. Donna's got her old 270 and I know it's working, but uh, we're going to have to shoot this one. Well, good. We'll go over here to the range and check them out and go look at some Audad this afternoon. Okay. Does that sound like a plan? You bet. Sounds, Sounds like good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Craig, what are, what are we shooting today? Well, this is uh, the LAW, Legendary Arms Works Model 704 that's in uh, 300 Win Mag. I've been shooting it all season and I, I really love the rifle, but uh, I've just put a, a brand new scope on it. This is uh, a Leupold VX6, but this is uh, a new one in 318. What, what kind of Hornady load are we shooting, Craig? Well, this is that uh, uh, Superformance, which is a really fast load. I've been getting good accuracy. This is a 180 grain SST. That's where you want to be. Your two, three inches high. Two, two and a two, half. Two and a half. Perfect. Two and a half high at a hundred. I'd say if you can put one more like that. Let's, yep. Let's go kill something. When you go on an outfitted hunt, you're betting more than just your hard-earned cash. You're betting your vacation time, your safety, and your hunting dreams. You've got to get it right. There's a lot of ways to find a good outfitter, but a simple way is to go on my website, craigboddington.com, and take a look at our Craig Boddington Endorsed Outfitter Program. Go on the website and you hook up directly with the outfitter. It's based on 40 years of hunting experience worldwide. My program's a group of outfitters that I believe in, and they believe in me. Hey, I know a good outfitter. After sighting in the rifle, the group heads out to look for a nice Audad for Donna. See where the saddle is right there? Right there's a big ram standing right there. And there's two ewes right above him. And him walking. Yeah. Wait till tomorrow, huh? I say we go in there, they're, they're gonna bed right on that face right there, and I think that way we're not having to make a rush decision and yeah. try to do something we don't wanna we do need, in a hurry. We need time, because if we if we rush it, we're gonna bust that herd, there's too well, many of them. You'll see as we get over there tomorrow, but that canyon, is it's enormous. I mean, that, that gorge down in there, I mean, it's 1,500 foot drop straight down, and they're pretty content, and they're just feeding, so I, I say let's just leave them in there. Okay. Craig, that, that big group of sheep we put to bed last night, we're gonna get over there quickly and see if we can okay. locate those sheep. I think they'll be right there and hopefully we might even can get lucky and get a double on them. 
maybe that'd be great you never know there's some good ones in that group but let's go over there and take a look and let's i think we, can, we got plenty of time this morning to put a good stock on them and let's go get yep. it done well let's take our time and get in there on them which is an ideal situation, kind of what we're wanting. And we've got a good south wind in our face, sun at our back. And I think once we get out to this first tier out here, about five, 600 yards, that those sheep are gonna be, they're gonna go down the bottom of that canyon. Hopefully we'll be within presentable rifle range right there. Just a big old lone ram by himself. That's a different sheep. Oh, we can ease up. I just want to okay. get a perspective of if they've either dropped down or what they're doing. Those other rams, they gotta be right here close. They didn't just up and leave all these animals. There's a big one. You see, there's there's four sheep staggered right there. The one walking out, the, the one that just walked out right there. He's the huge. Yeah. We get over there. We're gonna have to go all the way back to the headquarters, and there's a road coming down by the front gate that will put us, access us on this side of the canyon, and I can drive out, and then we can just walk this whole point, you know, we're coming out, it's gonna be like walking on top of this. Okay. And now, a conservation minute from SCI, first for hunters. We're here at the 43rd Safari Club International Convention. You know, this is also one of the greatest shows of wildlife art in the entire world. There's more than 55 internationally renowned artists here. And I tell you what, if you like wildlife, you gotta like wildlife art. And there's no place where you're gonna see more of it than here at the Safari Club Convention. Well, Hunter, the, these sheep essentially got here naturally, what they were introduced long time ago but 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 a long ways from well, they were they were released in the early 50s uh in the southern end of the shinati mountains and uh -huh. then there was a subsequent release done in the glass mountains it's a long ways from here yes sir it, i mean that's another 130 40 miles from here and then there was an, uh, another release done in paladero canyon up okay. in the panhandle and uh but, but from the chinatis and maybe even from the glass they've really populated Literally everything you can see. They, they have uh, it, just almost in every in, uh, entire mountain range in this western part of the state has, has all dead. It's a rewarding hunt and it's challenging. They spotted some rams but couldn't get past the cliffs below. They decided to get a better angle. Basically what we've done is this this big canyon right here, we've just made a big horseshoe shape around here. The sheep are gonna be about half to three quarters of a mile right down here and we're gonna plan of attack, stay up above them right here. We've got the wind right, but um, once we get down to this first tier down here, about half a mile or so, those sheep should be down in that canyon right yeah. in there. Hopefully we can get done in position and get it done. I hope so. All right, let's go. We 
we'll take off and go right down here to this grease wood, the short green stuff right on the top, and then we'll just get in the stealth mode right there and just be peeking over the edge, and I think we'll pick them up right there. They got around the rim rock, and finally were able to get a clear shot on that big ram. Six inches behind the shoulder. Looks like a clean miss. Well, Hunter, you did a great job of getting us on them. Unfortunately, I missed. Okay, so it happens. If you hunt enough, it happens. Gonna it's, have to keep looking. <laughs> That's pretty work. hard when they're all bowled up like that. There's an awful lot of pressure builds. Why don't we just find a bigger one? All right. Well, we've got about, a, got about half an hour walk to the truck, so we'll yeah. head, head that direction and go find Sounds some good. more. In this medical minute, Dr. Sadaf Khan's gonna tell us about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I was on a mountain in Uganda and I went down hard and we got into town and they misdiagnosed it. So I flew home with it and I never knew I'd had a heart attack until we finally got to the hospital. And of course they diagnosed it in about 90 seconds, but by then I was in big trouble. So how can you tell if your hunting partner's having a heart attack? Well, heart attacks, or what we call acute coronary syndrome, they're very important issues um, in any situation, but especially in the hunting world. Um, it's known that you're three times more likely to die from a heart attack than you are from a gunshot wound. So wow. you need to be aware of this. Um, we talk about the four E's of increasing your risk of having a heart attack, things that will increase your heart rate and increase the strain on the heart. So we talk about, uh, obviously, exertion. You're climbing a tree stand, you're field dressing your deer and then dragging out, your heart, your heart rate will go up. Also, emotion, epinephrine or adrenaline, as we call it over here, will increase your heart rate and environment. The cold and also altitude will uh, cause, you, cause more strain on the heart. Um, as well as eating a large meal before you go out to hunt, you may want to avoid that. But there are certain signs and symptoms of heart attacks that would be important to recognize in yourself and also in your buddies that you're hunting with. Um, we talk about chest pain or pressure. Certainly it can present in the chest, but it can also radiate. It can radiate to your jaw, it can radiate down your arm, into your back. You may have a feeling of upper abdominal pain, indigestion even, nausea, vomiting. These are all things that could indicate a heart attack. Shortness of breath and sweatiness are things that you ought to look out for. Other signs are elevated heart rate, low blood pressure, these are all things to look out for in a patient that potentially is having a heart attack in the field. And if you even suspect it, then, then what do you do? If you suspect that your uh, colleague or you are having a heart attack, you have to be fairly aggressive in the field. Um, we talk about medications that you can take, and these have been approved of by the American Heart Association. Aspirin is something that people carry regularly, especially baby aspirin, that's 81 milligrams. We recommend you take four of those, or take a regular aspirin at 325 milligrams. Certainly, if anybody in the, in the party is carrying nitrates, sublingual nitro will help. Um, beta blockers like metoprolol, that will help. And Plavix, if there's Plavix available, go ahead and take it. Other environmental things that you can do, if your altitude, descend. If you have oxygen, use it. 
make sure the patient's well hydrated if they're still able to drink make sure that they're hydrated if you get to a situation where they're feeling faint or lightheaded like they're about to pass out you didn't have that opportunity have them cough repetitively and deeply that will increase intraarterial pressure and maybe keep them conscious for a little longer if they're having a bradycardia those are all things that you can do but the most the definitive treatment obviously is to get them out of the field evacuate evacuate them as soon as possible and get them to a treatment center where they can undergo testing and if needed reperfusion therapy such as stenting or angioplasty because even 36 hours after a heart attack that will reduce your complications and could save your life I was there, but they misdiagnosed it. <laughs> that was unfortunate, but I'm glad you survived that episode. So am I. I'm Dr. Sadaf Khan. I want you to enjoy the outdoors safely, and I want you to take your global rescue card with you. Well, Hunter, where are we going to try this morning? We're going to go up through the middle canyon of the ranch here and access the rim back over here on the the east side of us and we're going to get up there and do some walking and glassing and, okay. and work some of those cuts out and some of those big draws and canyons and hopefully we can pick up some of these big rams in there okay that sounds good that sound like a plan yeah let's All try right. it let's do it and do a process of elimination if we're not finding them up on top we're going to work some of these cuts and these tears off right okay. off the edges of the rim He's looking at that U to the right, and if she moves, he'll, he'll, he'll turn and present you a broadside shot. Okay, there he goes. Chamber another one, put another one in him. You got him, you got him. Stay on him, he's gonna come right down this yeah. shelf right here. If you get another shot, shoot him again. Oh, there he goes, he's rolling. He's down. He's, going, he, he's down. He's Good down. Good shot. Good shot. <laughs> cool. Oh man, that is a beautiful round. Congratulations. That's a That's monster. what we were looking for. Thanks. Wow. Well, you don't get any bonus points for location on that one, though. <laughs> no. He's in a he's in a pretty precarious place. Uh, we got some work to do, but he's not going out there. Yeah. My goodness, look at this ram. Wow. Hunter, we've seen more big rams than I've ever seen the last couple of days, but when you saw this guy, you said you just said shoot him. What, what, do, you, what do you see? Because for me, they, and I've hunted them a lot, gee, they look a lot alike. They do, but he's just, he's just got that old man look to him. I mean, he's got, his ear cartilage is busted here. He's got those big lacerations and scars on him. I mean, uh, I mean, look at the, the big chunk taken out of his yeah. horn. He's just, he's really, really a, a superior sheep. He's a, 
One thing unusual about them is usually they have that black strap running no, down the back, and he it. doesn't have it, he which does that's not very, have it. very unusual. But uh, he's got uh, nine annuli growth rings on him, plus his lamb tip. So he's you know ten year old ram. I mean he's ancient, ancient old warrior. Yeah, he's seen some tough yeah. years. Tremendous beard and shouts on him. He's he's a great ram, great yeah. great sheep. Beautiful ram. That's we made an excellent shot on him. And well, thanks. It was nice and close. And for sure, this is what we were looking for. Thanks, it, it, it paid off. Well done. Good shooting.